Global from Memorial Gym on Nashville's West End. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Tonight, the Vanderbilt Commodores in their home finale look to play spoiler against the Missouri Tigers who are trying to work their way in to the SEC tournament. And with that, we welcome your courtside, Tom Hart alongside Chris Patola. This is a Missouri team that's desperate to get back to the tournament. They've been up and down all season after a five-game win streak. Now they've lost three in a row. They can't afford to drop this one. Yeah, no, they cannot. I mean, this would be a bad loss. There's no question about it. I, I think Missouri's got to get to 20 wins, which means they need two more either, you know, the last two games here of the regular season or in that conference tournament. And you see that the drop in percentage there. They went tonight 68%, 38% if they lose, largely on the backs of playing here at Vanderbilt, a team that has struggled. Well, Missouri is a team that was hoping to get back a superstar. Michael Porter Jr. has only played two minutes this season. He got in some real work today during Missouri's shoot-around and a very strenuous practice. We expected him to have an opportunity to play, but once again, though he's been cleared for basketball activities, he is not dressed and is not expected to see the floor without a trip to a phone booth in Superman's cape. Meanwhile, for Vanderbilt, three seniors will see the floor to start this one. That's right, three, including Matthew Fisher Davis, who is out there to start even though he's injured. The guys who have carried him, Tyler Roberson and Riley Lachance. Roberson has had a, an all-SEC season. There is no question about it. His numbers up greatly compared to where he has been. And then Riley Lachance, what a job he has done. What a career he has had. And how about Matthew Fisher Davis? Been out all season, but comes back here tonight and gets this opportunity start, Tom Hart. A senior send-off for Fisher Davis, who injured his shoulder January 13th against Kentucky and hasn't been seen from since. One of the best shooters in Vanderbilt history. He'll be out there on the floor to start the game. Then we expect Vandy with a quick foul to get him off the floor to an ovation. Pretty cool. A trio of great three-point shooters to start the season for this Vandy team, but Fisher Davis lost for the year midway through this year. Missouri has the basketball, catches Roberts in their leading score, looking for Jeremiah Tillman inside, and a bugaboo for Mizzou turnovers. They turn it over 14 and a half times a game. That's their first right off the bat. So take a look at the starting lineups. No Michael Porter Jr. on the floor for Missouri. This is a Missouri team that is down to eight healthy players, which means two of their starters, Cassius Robertson and Jordan Barnett, play a ton of minutes. Riley Lachance is off the mark with his first attempt, and Tillman's on the glass. You know, turnovers, as you mentioned, Tom, they had 21 two games ago against Ole Miss. It's been an area where a team that doesn't have a true point guard has really struggled to take care of the basketball. Jeremiah Tillman has made eight of his last 10 field goal attempts. The problem is staying on the floor. Only played 13 minutes in Missouri's loss Saturday against Kentucky. Mandy shoots a lot of threes. They typically are closer than that. Jeff Roberson, 46% from deep over his last four games, but he's off the mark. The two seniors have gone 0 for 2 to start this game for Bandy. These are the two highest volume three-point shooting teams in the SEC, especially of late. Here's Kevin Purrier, Missouri feeling an advantage inside. They should have that advantage all night. That's something that Conzo Martin stressed to us today, that they had to take advantage of the mismatch, especially at the four position. Saban Lee, freshman point guard, moves it around for Vandy. The chance with the ball fake. Free from three. He drains it. He is one of the best guys in this league at the shot fake. Underused. And it is exceptional for Riley the chance getting him into his shot. You, know, you talk about the three-point volume. The last three games, 53% of Vanderbilt shots have come from the three-point line. For Missouri, 50% of their shots have come from three. So the two high-volume three-point shooting teams in this league. 
That's a shooter's dream. Meanwhile, Jeremiah Tillman banks one home. He's got all four from Mizzou early. You know, Conzo Martin did tell us today, we, we've got to go inside early. We, we have become a team that's very reliant on perimeter shooting. We do it well. We've got to play through those big guys. Freshman point guard Saban Lee turns it over. Cassius Robertson. Back to the bigs. This is per year again. The lefty goes to his strong side. All six points from Mizzou have come in the paint. Oh, and there's the emphasis. And you're coming off a game where Vanderbilt loses to Texas A&M, and that's a team who can punish you up front. Mizzou trying to do the same thing early here. Ezek Obina gets his first up and in. And another Missouri turnover. Mishandle between Cassius Robertson and Jordan Barnett. Conzo Martin in his first season as Missouri's head coach. As a player, he was a first team all Big Ten selection. Scored 18 points a game, was a three point threat on his own. Playing at Purdue alongside big dog Glenn Robinson. He was telling us today, we were talking about three point shooting. He said, I think I was the first guy to ever play for Gene Cady who took a step up three, a dribble into a three on a fast break. That was a shot that was never used back in those days. Certainly uh, not something Gene Cady taught. He said he warmed up to it eventually. He got scores like Glenn Robinson, a shooter like Conzo Martin yeah. come But the, the point that Conzo made as Perrier commits his first was that if he took a bad shot or missed a shot, he could back it up yeah. on the defensive end because he was such a hard worker on the defensive end. And those types of guys are rare, Tom Hart. The guys who can you know, guys may lean into the offensive end. They're not pulling the cord on the other end. Conzo was one of those rare two-way players. Roberson with the drive. Nifty move to finish for the senior from Houston. He should be on the All-SEC first team. If he's not, it, it, that's a crime. He has had an outstanding season. One of those seniors who continues to get better year after year after year. Top 10 of points, top 10 of rebounds. John Tay Porter. Nails his first three-point attempt. That's a guy who can get it done inside and outside. Let's go! Well, that's been the big difference with Missouri this year. I mean, they won eight games last year. They've won 18 games this year. And it's that front line. It's young, but it has been productive. It's rebounded. It's been a difference maker for this Missouri team. Meanwhile, Vandy can bury it when they get hot. Jeff Roberson hits his first triple, and the doors are back up. Jordan Barnett steps into one. And then Vandy loses it across the end line. Two evenly matched teams. And on the home side, the seniors leading the way for Vandy. We'll go deeper into what these guys mean to this program. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. And in part by Infinity. Empower the drive. So on senior day at Vanderbilt, we go back to the beginning for each of these three seniors, Riley LaChance, Jeff Roberson, Matthew Fisher Davis, born just months apart, three different parts of the country. Brookfield, Wisconsin for LaChance, Houston, Texas for Roberson, and Matthew Fisher Davis, born in Charlotte. So it is their senior night, honored before the game today with their second coaching staff, Bryce Drew, after coming to campus with Kevin Stalling squad and wrapping up their careers here at home. Riley LaChance knows what it's like to have big moments in this gym. Another game winner a few games ago against Mississippi State. They call it Memorial Magic, and there's just something different about playing at home. You know, everybody loves when their baby pictures are brought out on air. <laughs> you know, you should have to sign a waiver for that. Uh, I don't know if those three young men were aware, but what, what careers they have had 
had to go through a coaching change, have had to, to go through the, the injury of Matthew Fisher Davis this year. But uh, at the end of it all, they get Vanderbilt degrees, and that's pretty special. We asked your parents for yours. We couldn't find one without stumble. Yeah. Well, I've learned, my, I've learned my lesson, Tom Hart. Those things have been burned long ago. <laughs> I, was not a, I was not an adorable baby. <laughs> oh, it can't be true. Cassius Robertson trying to get it, for, get it going for Missouri, one of the top five scorers in this league. Missouri had a very spirited and physical practice today for a game day and a shoot around. They worked with the scout team a little bit. Then they played five on five half court. Chris Patola, it was it was heavy stuff for a game day. Well, and Michael Porter was a part of all of that. Uh, you know that that's why I, I thought he was going to play. Uh, I'm I'm shocked he's not playing tonight because he went through that workout today. He shot the ball great in the uh, five on zero drills and then when they actually got into contact like you're talking about he participated played well was moving well um decide not to bring him back tonight I, the question becomes if you're not going to bring him back tonight then when are you if you're going to missouri has a home game at arkansas to close the regular season in the sec tournament in st louis and they are there, there's a lot of different elements to this number one being they're in danger of falling off the bubble and out of the tournament and I understand the concern with team chemistry. I understand working a guy in. But hogwash when you're returning a guy who's a lottery pick and your biggest need is someone to take the ball in end of game situations. Well, and look, Missouri has a ceiling with the group out there. And I think there's part of Conzo Martin that feels like these guys have gone to battle for three and a half months that Porter has been out. And he wants to, to kind of see that through. But it, this guy also wants to play. And if your ceiling is at a certain level, but that guy raises the roof well beyond what your ceiling is, you got to play him. I, I'm, again, I, he was moving well. Uh, there's a lot we don't know about how he's feeling, but I'm shocked he's not playing tonight. Underwent a microdisectomy of the L3 and L4 spinal disc back on November 21st. What we're showing is a very light part of his workout. It was physical. He was banging inside with guys like Kevin Purrier fighting for rebounds. You went through something similar when you're on Mike Krzyzewski's staff at Duke and Kyrie Irving played early in the season, then didn't play at all, and returned in the postseason to play in the NCAA tournament. What's the difference in it? Well, first of all, walk us through that and tell me what the difference is. Well, Kyrie had played eight games, and, and we were we had a great shot of, of winning the whole thing with him in the fold. He played eight games, so we had a, a much more of a body work, body up work than, than Porter does. But, you know, there were a lot of folks, I think, that didn't want Kyrie to come back and play. But ultimately, he wanted to play. He wanted to play in an NCAA tournament. He knew he was going to be a one and done. So there was a lot that went into the decision. But once we figured out that he was healthy enough and he wanted to play, uh, once we made sure that Kyle Singler, Nolan Smith, two seniors on that team were going to be okay with it, it, it was a no-brainer. That was a Duke team that was coming off of a national title that won the ACC tournament without Irving and then got him back for the NCAA tournament. But you just touched on something that is key, I think. We're talking about team chemistry. Another three for Vandy. It's Roberson again. He's got three in this first half. You are telling me earlier today that Mike Krzyzewski actually went to those two seniors to ask them how they would feel about Kyrie Irving returning, and I would assume that if they would have given a negative reaction, they would have said, you know what, we're okay without you. Yeah. Well, the thing about that team that year in 2011 is we had won the ACC tournament. We were going to be a number one seed, which we ended up being in the NCAA tournament, and Nolan Smith was the ACC player of the year. So Coach K said to our staff one day in a meeting, he said, look, we need to talk to those two seniors. They need to be on the same page. We need to let them know what our plan is and make sure they're okay with it. Now, to their credit, they were great about it. They said, look, we want this guy to play because he gives us our best chance to win. Well, right now, the guy who gets the best chance to win is Cassius Robertson. He's been a revelation. It's all through his own work. We'll break down his shot and how he's fixed it when we return to Vandy. Atlanta United vs. DC United, March 11th on ESPN. Champ Week, you know what you're gonna get. But the whole world gonna know my name. Just wait and see. Miracles. They gonna talk about the fact. Cardi and Jumbo with the 
disbelief. <laughs> Sheer joy. The full range of hoops glory, guaranteed. Champ Week continues next weekend on ESPN. Missouri has been led this season by Cassius Robertson, a transfer from Canisius. When he came to Missouri, he stepped up in competition and he stepped up his game, but it didn't come without a lot of hard work. I want to hear your thoughts as we look at some of this old tape of you as a player. Tell me, as we watch this roll, what's wrong with this shot? What do you see? Um, my elbow is sticking out a little bit, and um, the way it felt was, was just kind of off for me. Um, like it was really it was really hard to be consistent we've seen what your shot looked like and we've seen what it looks like now can you just describe mm. what feels good to you and what feels wrong and can, can you show me yeah yeah okay so before um, it used to really be um, kind of like a two-hand shot almost um, and I wouldn't use this hand but it would interfere with my shot the biggest thing for me was really trying to take this hand off um, at my release point um, so to keep this one steady you know keep my make sure my elbows under you know under the ball um, and make sure this hand is coming off properly well I would say it's worked he's shooting 43 percent from deep that is third best in the SEC he's one of the top scoring transfers in all of college basketball when I sat down with him last week Chris to talk about reinventing a shot won that he really reinvented himself as a basketball player what a journey to go from unrecruited Canisius was the only team that wanted him a school of about 3,000 in Buffalo and then to show up at Missouri and to have the success that he's had in this league this year with all the competition that's an amazing journey for this basketball player well, it starts with his effort. I mean, anything, even before the shooting, with Cassius Robertson, it starts with how hard he plays the game of basketball. You know, the other thing, I, I always, when guys want to be shooters, or especially if they're in slumps, I always ask two things. Like, what shots are you taking in practice? Are, are you going at game speed? Are you taking game shots? And what kind of shots are you taking in games? I mean, so many times, if you're taking a volume of bad shots, you're going to shoot a low percentage. Missouri with the foul, Kevin per year. That's his second. Vanderbilt's been red hot. They have made three of their last three tonight on ESPN. Should be a good one at the Dean Smith Center, Chapel Hill. Number nine, North Carolina comes in on a six-game win streak. They take on Miami at nine Eastern. Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile. Heels Canes also available on the ESPN app. I'm gonna tell you right now, of all the teams to fear right now. North Carolina is one of those teams. They have become so comfortable with that small lineup they're playing. Luke May is having an all-ACC season, playing their best basketball. Here's Jonte Porter from Missouri, and he gets the Tigers back on the right track. He's hit a couple threes. You said this would be a high-volume game, by the way, from, from deep, and it has been. Vandy has hit five of eight from deep. Missouri has hit two of four. You know, you look at the last three games for both these teams. Vanderbilt's taken 93s in their last three games. Is that a Missouri, lot? <laughs> Missouri's taken 85. Riley Lachance hits another one. He's got two. And it's defensively. You've got to run these guys off that line. You've got to force players to be creators. Force them to put it on the floor. You can't allow them to be standstill shooters. Tillman will take a trip to the free throw line. Big advantage inside as he draws a second on Cleavon Brown. How about Riley Lachance oh, as a shooter? He's so good at hunting his shot. There's Jonte Porter right there, and he loves that top of the key shot. He kind of fills that pocket at the top of the key. And then that's where Riley Lachance, another shot fake. Nobody better in this league at doing that. Relocates and finds space, and he's so good at playing off of that ball once it gets into the paint. He relocates well and finds a shot. Vanderbilt has taken 12 shots so far tonight. Nine of them have come from behind the arc. Five of Missouri's 12 attempts have come from deep. It'll be Vanderbilt basketball leading by four after Tillman hits one of two. Missouri had a tough time closing out of Kentucky shooters Saturday night at Rupp. They had a big first half and one of the best shooting nights of the season for John Calipari's team. What do the Tigers need to do defensively to try to
play better perimeter defense on Vandy. You got to force guys to dribble. You know, even when that ball gets into the paint, you can't leave shooters. Vandy punches it in. Porter rejects it. Commodores have made six of their last seven threes. You know, it's funny, Tom. Conzo Martin telling us today about the way that Kentucky shot it. He said part of it was scouting. Like, we wanted Kentucky to beat us over the top. He said, I think our guys felt like that was okay. Just give them open shots. Here tonight against the Vanderbilt team that really shoots it, that's what they want to do. You, you've got to close out hard, force guys to put it on the floor and make plays at the basket. Kentucky finished that game 10 of 16 from deep. They hit 8 of 10 in the first half. Looking at the shot clock, it was reset with 9 after Porter rejected it. So that's where they're going to put it here in a moment or two. Put it back down towards 9 seconds. The game before, which was a costly loss for Missouri, they dropped a home decision to Ole Miss, and Ole Miss hit nine threes in that game. Well, and part of it, too, in that game was the 21 turnovers. In the LSU loss, they couldn't finish inside. I mean, it, it's been a, a variety of things that have plagued them over these three games. I think ultimately for Conzo Martin, it's about getting back to the defensive team that they've been. You know, when, when Michael Porter Jr. goes out on November 10th, you don't have that offensive weapon. For Conzo Martin, it was about developing a defensive identity that could give them some consistency. Well, it's a Missouri team without Michael Porter Jr. for now that's trying to get back in the NCAA tournament. They have six quadrant one wins, but two Q3 losses, including that home loss to Ole Miss you talked about where they turned it over 21 times. Also lost a neutral site game to Illinois. You think they need to win both games to close out the season to get in? No, I think ultimately they need 20. So okay. if that, whether that comes, I mean, they got to win tonight. I think this this would not be seen as a, as a good loss. Uh, but you know, whatever they do, conference tournament here to end the regular season, I think they've got to get to 20 wins. And, and part of that is about how good the SEC has been this year. 20 wins should get you in. Another triple for Vandy. Levon Brown hits one. He only has eight on the season now. And he's got to make here in this first half. Cassius Robertson over the zone, and he drills an open shot. And that's the problem with the zone. You, you, you can play a 2-3 zone, but you have got to shade Cassius Robinson. His, his eyes light up when he sees that zone, that 45-degree angle pocket. Here's Peyton Willis, challenge three. Guy's got his hand in his face. A rare miss from Vandy for, from deep. They are seven of 10 from behind the arc. Pardon me, seven of 11 now. Barnett having a tough night shooting the ball. 0 for four. going to say if he hits one <laughs> but Vandy with the rebound here's Toy do you believe the axiom that shooting is contagious I believe it but it depends on who's taking the shots <laughs> Isha K. Obina hadn't made a three all season hadn't even attempted it some guys are open for a reason Tom Hart yeah Dina's got the board. Great perimeter defense by John Tate Porter. And then it's taken away. Barnett dives for it. Peyton Willis comes out of there with it. The lob. And Vandy able to finish. Yeah, that's a tough play because Barnett, you know, does what you want a guy to do. He dives on a 50-50 ball and ends up turning it over, leading to points. It's more of a belly flop, wasn't it? It was, uh, 
It was a three from the Russian judge. <laughs> Next, he's going to attempt to triple Lindy. Here's Cassius Robertson. And Missouri turns it over. Seven turnovers for Missouri and Vandy red hot. And shooters need two things, time and space. These last two shots here, that's all they had was time and space. Defender backs off with Cleavon Brown and then Cassius Robertson. That's too much. Bottle. The farthest reach of the course, but the enduring center of its drama and the indelible swirl of its challenge. Three holes where moments are counted in more than strokes and the memories surround us like the wind. Three holes where fortune turns and history lives. Amen corner. And for all who enter, say a prayer at the Masters. My family means everything to me. While I was deployed in Iraq, really grateful USA was able to take care of my family. It's my job to provide the best security I know to my kids. Do you believe in second chances? Walker, party at Well, here is the new beginning. Knocked out the shot clock. Are you serious? Champ Week presented by Prism on ESPN. 354 games over 12 days on ESPN Networks. Champ week and overload of basketball. I can't wait. It's my favorite week of the year. You say that about every week. I know. I, you're, you're I, just I have the, a lot of fun. You're an optimist in that way. No, you have to be an optimist to say that Michael Porter Jr. would maybe return for the SEC tournament starting March 7th in St. Louis. All games either on the SEC Network or on ESPN. Or maybe the home finale against Arkansas on Saturday. Again, you know, we were talking earlier. There's a lot that goes into that decision. So, but but based on what we saw, he seemed to be moving well. So I I, I had assumed he'd come back tonight. Because as you look ahead, again, if, if not tonight, then when would you bring him back? Had a long talk with Conzo Martin about it today, and even back to Saturday before the Kentucky game. And he said, "Listen, the kid's not worried about getting hurt. The kid just wants to play basketball. It was up to him." And it sounds very similar to what Kyrie Irving told. You and the Duke staff back a few years ago just want to play. I want to be out on the floor. Uh, it may not be the wisest business decision in some ways, but kids who grew up playing basketball and live on the court, they want to be on the court. Yep. Well, and, and if you're only going to be here one year, which I, I would assume Michael Porter Jr. is only going to be here one year, you, you want to experience as much of it as you can in that one year. In, in the NCAA tournament, you grow up watching it. You grow up loving it. You got an opportunity to play in it. You want to play. Missouri's advantage has been inside. That is their 10th point in the paint. This time it comes from Reed Nico. How hard would it be to then insert him into game action either in the SEC tournament or the NCAA tournament as opposed to sliding him in for four minutes here in the first half and a few minutes in the second half tonight? Well, it's, uh, you know, it, it depends on who you're playing. Again, like, I, I don't know if you bring him back against the Kentucky on the road that game the other night. Physical, athletic. Uh, but, but here you're playing against the Vanderbilt team. Doesn't have a lot of size. They're the worst defensive team in the league. And, you know, it's just the way it is. So, I, you know, it seemed like a natural fit. I mean, his biggest issue, I think, is, is fitting in defensively with a Missouri team that has guarded well this year. That, that's going to be his biggest hurdle if and when he does come back. That is their eighth turnover and an offensive foul on Saban Lee. One thing working really well for Vandy tonight, the three-point shot. 24 of their 30 points have come from behind the arc. Kind of like the Warriors. Our next NBA Wednesday doubleheader has Steph, KD, and the Warriors in D.C. to take on Bradley Beal and the Wizards at 8 Eastern. And James Harden, Chris Paul, and the Rockets are up against CP3's former team, the Clippers. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. Vanderbilt has been unconscious from deep here in the first half.
Kevin Perrier puts it on the floor. Sneaks it in. He and Jonte Porter, if they get to their left hand, they are really tough to stop. You have got to make the two of them go to their right. Halfway home and fell out. Dice was looking for Tillman, who didn't quite have position yet. Threw it up and threw it away. Missouri has turned it over nine times. Vandy has hit eight threes. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Arby's. Arby's, we have the Meeks. TV Doctors of America, and we may not know much about medicine, but we know a lot about drama. From scandalous romance to ridiculous plot twists. <gasps> Son? Dad. We also know you can avoid drama by getting an annual checkup. So we're partnering with Cigna to remind you to go see a real doctor. Go, no, and take control of your health. It could save your life. Doctor poses. Dad. Cigna, together, all the way. All right, gentlemen, personally, I think the studio looks better without Jay in there. Yeah, well, that's what Seth would say that. <laughs> it, you know, it gives him more time, more room to operate. <laughs> Needs his space, is that what you're saying? <laughs> How about the space Vandy has found from behind the arc? They came in to tonight's game, middle of the pack in the SEC in shooting from deep, just a tick below 35%. They have hit 8 of 14 from deep. That's... 57%. Riley Lachance step back. Offensive board and a putback. And everything's going Vandy's way tonight. And those are the kind of plays Roberson has made all year. I mean, he just gets in there on an offensive board, cleans it up, gets his team two points. Vandy has been really tough to beat here at home. It really started with a home win against Alabama early in the season when Alabama came in as a red-hot team and nearly knocked off Kentucky here. And they knocked off Mississippi State at the buzzer. They beat Florida here in the home court a week and a half ago. It's been a wide-open SEC all season. What a move, but no finish. And then Missouri knocks it out of bounds again. Senior night, and Jeff Roberson taking advantage of it. Well, he starts in the perimeter and gets a run. There he is in a corner. Once the shot goes up, watch him run right behind his defender and sneaks in there. Guys who are hungry to score, they, they don't need touches. They don't need plays run for them. They'll create offense on their own. He's done that so much this year. He already has 13. He averages 17, tied for six in the SEC. Mismatch with Geist. Porter comes to help. Little bounce, and Vandy loses it out of bounds. Missouri's shooting 50% from the floor thus far, but having a hard time keeping pace with Vandy's hot shooting. Well, and Vandy has, you know, certainly struggled on a defensive end this year. Worst defense in the SEC statistically it is an area where Mizzou has has really carried themselves though on that defensive end throughout the season the last three games it has let them down and Conzo Martin wanting to get back to some of that toughness 
that they have had. Jonte Porter. And he gets fouled. After getting deep post position, it'll be another on Saban Lee, the freshman point guard. By the way, this is a team that is losing three seniors, but they are reloading under Bryce Drew. They have a sensational recruiting class already signed up coming in next year, and maybe more to come. Well, he can coach now. Uh, you know, nobody's ever, ever doubted that. And, and frankly, what he's done the last two years with the, the personnel he has assumed has been remarkable to get that team to the tournament last year and then to keep them themselves above above water this year without Matthew Fisher Davis. He, he can certainly coach and now he's showing you can recruit. And when you put some talent around what he can do, you've got a, a great future here. And it's the same for Missouri. I mean, there, there are you know, certainly young players, young pieces have fit in nicely this year. Roberson with the offensive foul. First on the senior. Mentioned they're reloading next year here on the West End. A consensus top 10 2018 recruiting class. Including Darius Garland will be in the backcourt. Simi Shitu is the top ranked player thus far. He comes in as the number 11 player in the country. Look at this. From a historical perspective, Vanderbilt has not seen a recruiting class like this. Man. Jordan Geis with a rare triple. Well, Bryce Drew talking to us today about what those guys can bring defensively. Again, it's an area where this, this team has struggled the last two years, guarding people. It's one of the things that has Bryce Drew so excited. They've got two guys sitting out, redshirting this year, who he feels will also contribute. And yeah, they got some size sitting out. We've got a timeout on the floor. 38.7 left in the half. Missouri trailing by two. Look at you, Tyson Anytizers and Crispy Strips. You help fuel greatness. You'll just have to make the ultimate game day sacrifice and be eaten. A dazzling place I never knew. A new, fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. Let me share this whole new world with you. Here's why it's a jumbled mess in the SEC. Joe Lenardi has eight teams in the SEC in the NCAA tournament. Missouri and Alabama right there in the bubble. Alabama's trying to right the ship. They've lost three in a row. Missouri has lost three in a row. Arkansas is trending up of this crew. And Tennessee's a team that nobody wants to face. Well, this league did itself a tremendous service by its strength of schedule. And certainly in conference speaks for itself. What they did in the non-conference has helped its projections. Shot clock is off. Last chance for Vandy. They've hit eight threes here in this first half. And Bryce Drew will set something up for the buzzer. It's at eight now. Lachance still holding at seven. And here he goes with five. Working on Barnett. Two, one, fall away at the buzzer. Not exactly what they had drawn up. The seniors, Roberson and Lachance, have combined for 19 of Bandy's 32 points. 32-30 is our score at the break. Land Rover Halftime Report starts right after these messages. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. The campus of Vanderbilt University on Nashville's West End. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And as we get ready to start the second half, the Vandy fans are excited about this one. They have a chance to play spoiler. The doors with a two-point lead on Mizzou. Welcome back courtside. 
Tom Hart alongside Chris Patola. No question, Vandy's done it with a long ball tonight. Yeah, well, that's what they do. 37% of their offense on the season comes from threes. 15 of their 27 shots tonight are three-point shots. And there really hasn't been a sense of urgency from Missouri to get out and at least make these difficult shots. Watch how many of these start as wide open attempts. There's the shot fake by Lachance. He's done that twice in that half. If, if Missouri is not committed, we saw what they did against Kentucky the other night, giving up that three ball. If they're not committed in the second half of stopping that three-point line, they're going to lose this game. Tigers into the half on a 7-2 run, so that was a good sign. They scored the final five points in the first half. Twelve of Missouri's 30 points have come in the paint. We've already illustrated just how critical this game is to Missouri's postseason hopes. According to ESPN BPI, their chances for the postseason drop dramatically should they lose this one. On the road to a Vandy team that is 11 and 18 overall and just 5 and 11 in conference. Killer two for Missouri in that first half is the nine turnovers. I mean, they're shooting 50% from the field, so they're getting what they want. There's a good example, but you've got to value those possessions. Missouri went to Jeremiah Tillman to start the game. They go back to him to start the second half. He is a monster. Conzo Martin telling us he gives them their toughness. He's their muscle on the interior. Problem is he hadn't been on the floor enough. Seven and a half fouls per 40 minutes. And just on cue as Tillman, this is the good news for him, commits his first and it comes a minute into the second half. And that'll put Ijeke Obina to the free throw line. Freshman from Nigeria is just 18 years old. He's one of the guys that Bryce Drew over the last couple of years wanted to redshirt but didn't have that opportunity. And he's a guy who probably could have benefited and not because he needed to get any bigger or stronger. Uh, you'd have to register him if... <laughs> If he did get bigger or stronger, but but certainly from an offensive standpoint, a guy who could use more time, more seasoning. Just 52 percent from the free throw line, and he misses them both. Kevin Perrier working inside on Roberson to his offhand. And that's the key, Tom. You get him to that right hand, and his percentages go way down. You've got to take away his left. The chance down the paint. And he draws a foul on Tillman. Zero fouls in the first half for Jeremiah Tillman, and quickly two in the first minute and a half here in the second half. So it puts Riley Lachance at the free throw line. Senior from... Brookfield Central High School in Wisconsin. Well, he was their all-time leader in points and steals. He is all over the Vanderbilt record book as he wraps up his Vandy career. Well, what, what a charm getting Bryce Drew as his head coach has been for Riley Lachance. You know, I think at to some degree, Kevin Stallings had had, had enough of Riley Lachance for whatever reason. You know, a lot of his value in Lachance, I think, was making shots. But what a job Bryce Drew has done, reinstilling confidence in a terrific college basketball player. Double on Tillman. He goes off of his leg and back to the home team. Speaking of climbing through the ranks here at Vandy, where they have had some sensational shooters. Top 20 in points, top 10 in threes made, top five in free throw percentage, and top 10 in assists. I mean, shooters are a different breed now, and I think Bryce Drew identified with Lachance, understood the plight of a shooter, understood how Lachance could make an impact, and that's why I say the relationship has been a great one. Kevin Perrier commits a foul. Now that's his third, and Tillman has two. So Missouri's advantage inside is in peril thanks to foul trouble. 
Yeah, so you go as a shooter to working or playing for a shooter. Bryce Drew hit 364 threes in his Valparaiso career, 2,000 point score. Well, and shooters, especially when they're not shooting well, need to be coddled. They need to be loved. They need they need to be you know sat down on the couch and and uh, talked to and. Kind of like color analysts. Absolutely. Uh, there's no question. We're divas. Absolutely. <laughs> and there was, I think, a point where Kevin Stallings, there's a harshness to the way he goes about things, and I don't know if he necessarily identified with the chance. And, you know, for Riley, you get two years of Bryce Drew, a guy who understands. I don't know on, on a friendly scale if you could have tipped the scale any further than going from Kevin Stallings with all due respect to Bryce right. Drew. I, I tried to uh, make that as soft as possible. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> clearly it wasn't that obvious. Uh, by the way, Pitt had seven points in the first half against Virginia on Saturday. Yeah. Well, they, got, they had 30 in the second half, so, <laughs> you know, things were looking up after the seven they put up in the first half. Shot clock of five. Jordan Barnett comes up with a takeaway. Nice. Cullen Van Leer, open three. That's good offense, though. A nice extra pass from Porter. Nobody picks up Roberson. He gets to the rack for his first bucket this half. Vandy's back in front. And that's the problem with Tillman on the bench. You, you don't have that muscle, that size inside. A guy who's going to come over with aggression to protect your basket. Jante Porter left alone. Mizzou back in front. What a player he is and is going to be. One of the few guys in the country and certainly in this league with uh, over 50 assists, over 50 blocks, shows the ability to stretch it. One of just 10 in the country that can say that. Roberson trying to work his way free and they get Porter with the reaching. Here's this drive by Roberson down Broadway and, and this is where nobody comes over to protect the basket. I mean, watch how easy, first of all, it's a straight line drive that Van Leer gives up and then Porter doesn't fight to get around. And then here's Porter on the other end. Nice little ball fake there to shift the defense. And that is his spot. That top of the key three-point shot shoots a high percentage. And correction, that previous foul against Missouri was on Jordan Geis, not on Porter, as I initially said. Brett Rao has entered the game for Missouri. He saw some key minutes against Kentucky on Saturday. Got a foul on the chance. We got a one-point game here in Nashville's West End. Look at you, Tyson Anytizers and Krispy Strips. You help fuel greatness. You'll just have to make the ultimate game day sacrifice and be eaten. I wish I could wake up and say hi to a giraffe. Ride a train in the sky. And visit far away galaxies. When you stay at a Disney Resort hotel, all your wishes come true. From being in the middle of the magic to extra time in the park. And now you can save up to 20% on rooms at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels. Imagine the magic of staying here. Two shades of blue collide in a sonic blockbuster rematch. UNC Duke, Saturday at 8.15 on ESPN. Saturday at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. It's part two of college basketball's greatest rivalry, and it's a sonic blockbuster. Carolina beat Duke February 8th, a four-point win at Chapel Hill. This one's a Cameron, though. And the last 100 meetings are split 50-50 right down the middle. Number nine, North Carolina. Number five, Duke, also streaming live on the ESPN app. You've been a part of that rivalry. It is almost indescribable. It is. It absolutely is. Had some amazing, amazing games.
What makes it different than any other rivalry in your experience? Well, I mean, it, like I was a part of Army-Navy, which, you know, was, is obviously one of the great rivalries. The thing about Duke Carolina is you live amongst each other. Like, you're only, it's only 10 miles apart. You're living amongst North Carolina fans. They're living amongst Duke fans. So I, I think proximity has a lot to do with that. Certainly the, the great games that have been played. I remember in 2012, my last year on, on the staff there was the year that Austin Rivers hit that shot over at Chapel Hill. I mean, we were getting beat badly in that game. They were much, much better than us that year. Somehow we crept back, and, and Austin had it with you know 15 seconds, ends up dribbling with Tyler Zella on him, and ends up knocking down the game winner. Dante Porter challenges that shot. It ends up in Vandy's hands with a fresh 30. And a little floater in the lane for Jeff Roberson. He's got 17. One-point game again. Starting to see some emotion from that Missouri bench. They know just how important this game is for the Tigers' postseason hopes. Out of the double, it gets swung to Barnett. And it'll fall through. They needed that. They, they need his production. He's a, he's a catch-and-shoot player. He's not, not a guy who puts it on the floor, so it's hard for him to get his own stuff. He's got to have other guys create for him, but they need his shooting. Barnett did make a shot in the first half. Shot clock's at six. Nice move. Joe Toy with his first bucket. It's nice to be able to float in the air. The, the game becomes much easier. And that's what Toy does. He is a driver of the ball. Bandy fouls on the double. It's the first on Toy. How about Jordan Barnett starting to feel it? And this is where he is a catch-and-shoot guy. That, that's just too much space, too much time. You've got to be all over him. And, and like you said, Tom, did not make a bucket in the first half. They need his production. You see how important this game is. That BPI percentage goes way down with a loss here against Vanderbilt. Currently a nine seed, according to Joe Lenardi. Barnett, spot up three, little wide right, and then a foul by Jonte Porter going over the back. That's a second up Porter. Perrier's got three. Tillman's got two. Here's Lachance with six. Trying to lose Barnett. It's into the paint. Off the mark. Porter's got it. And Jonte Porter will lead the break for Mizzou. <laughs> and then his coachability kept crept in and realized that was probably not the best idea. 6'11", 18-year-old flying down the floor. Double to per year. Good ball movement again. Shot like a five. Geist lost his footing and will get the benefit of a whistle, much to the chagrin of the home crowd. They'll get Saban Lee for his third. Talked a lot about Michael Porter tonight. Younger brother Jonte has gone for 13 already. He reclassified. He should be a senior in high school right now. But he reclassified up to have the chance to play with brother Michael, their dad Michael Sr. on this Missouri staff. I think heroic deeds were all conceived in the open air. I think whatever I shall meet on the road I shall like. And whoever beholds me shall like me. 
think whoever I see must be happy. There's suddenly a sense of urgency around this Missouri team. They trailed at the half by two to Vanderbilt, but now they've put together a run. They lead by four. 21 to 10 run since the three-minute mark in the first half. Well, they haven't given up a three yet this half, and they only have one turnover. The two things that plagued them in the first half. And I, I you know, look, I, I think there's energy that comes from making shots. I mean, they're shooting 52% in this game. And making shots, I think, has energized their defense. Missouri turned it over nine times in the first half, and they gave up eight threes. <laughs> Stripped by Jonte Porter. Cassius Robertson will hand it off. Conzo Martin is obviously, if you weren't aware, a very defensive-minded coach who prides himself on great team defense and rebounding. Missouri has been fantastic at both this season. They'll let the shot clock get the single digits. Poked away by Roberson. I mean, you got to be able to make a post feed. Drop it down there into him. You know, post-passing is a, is a lost art, and, you know, 90% of the time, it's the guard's fault. Get an angle, drop it in there. Shot clock at five. Porter steps up, Man. drains a jumper. He is talented, folks. I mean, he's he's showing you the three. He's showing you the ability to post, pass out of the double team. There he faces up and shoots. Jonte Porter has it all. Missouri leads by six here. And Bryce Drew wants to use a timeout to talk about it. A lot of Porters in the building tonight. We'll break down what this means for Mizzou. I never dreamed that I'd meet somebody like you. No. Look at you, Tyson Anytizers and Krispy Strips. You help fuel greatness. You'll just have to make the ultimate game day sacrifice and be eaten. Well, who knew when the season began it would be this Porter leading Missouri to a key victory this season? Jonte Porter having a great game. His older brother, Michael Porter Jr., took part in practice today. He's been cleared to resume basketball activities, but they have not put him on the floor just yet. He's in street clothes for the most part tonight. He's got a front row seat watching little brother get it done. And it's been a struggle in the last three games, only shooting 9 of 26, but he has shown you the full arsenal tonight. Shows you the three ball, does a nice job finding that top of the key spot. He loves that shot right there, but then he shows you the post, the ability to face, little jab step, and has done a nice job passing out of the double team. Vanderbilt's run a double at him when he's caught it on the block. He's got all the skill sets, remember, over 50 assists, over 50 blocks. Just a really a multi-arsenal player, and as you said, should be in high school this year. Comes from good stock, his mom Lisa averaged 59 points a game in high school, 59. Loose ball, they'll untangle him with three on the shot clock. Jump ball, and come back the other way. You have 59 points for Cedar Rapids Jefferson High School. Dad Michael Porter Sr. was a fine player in his own right, originally committed to Wake Forest after a coaching change ended up at the University of New Orleans. 
was playing high school basketball. Back then in Iowa, girls high school basketball was six on six. Three on the offensive end, three on the defensive end, and you couldn't cross half court. <laughs> and I'm sure there was no three-point shot. No, no, not at all. That means you're playing three on three every night. You think she was dominating the basketball a little bit? Riley Lachance gets cut off. Here's Toy. She went on to play for Iowa, leading to a Big Ten title. That was well defended. You know, Vanderbilt, they get you into closeouts, playing chase. Mizzou did a nice job there, and then a good job on the block by Tillman. Good post defense. Great sharing, and Barnett splashes it down from the corner. When he's got his feet set, he is deadly. A catch-and-shoot player, but when he's allowed to catch and shoot, he can hurt you. A 15-4 Missouri run over the span. Vandy's been scoreless for almost five minutes now. Doors can't answer from Roberson. Well, you see how important the three-point shot is to Vanderbilt. They have a hard time manufacturing points when that perimeter shot is not going down. They have a very small lineup out there right now. Shot clock at five. Jeremiah Tillman, power inside, but lost it. Downs of Martin, can't believe they won a whistle on that one. Toy left open. And Vandy has missed poorly two wide open shots on the last two possessions. They've missed their last six field goal attempts now. And you can tell Toy didn't want to shoot that. You know, off the catch, the hesitation told you all you needed to know. Well, look at this mismatch. Porter on the chance. Out to Barnett. And an assist for the big guy. Barnett drains another. In a must-win game, Missouri is coming alive at just the right time. 11 in the second half for Jordan Barnett. How about this playing out of the post? The unselfishness, the feel to a catch-and-shoot Barnett. And it's raining here in Nashville. Did we lose Jay again? I mean, he won there, then he was there, then the seat was full. It's almost kind of like the slump that Oklahoma went through. Thought we lost Trey Young for a moment. He was able to snap Oklahoma's six-game losing streak. Hit seven of 11. Meanwhile, Riley LeChant trying to get Vandy back on the good side of things. Is Trey Young your player of the year? He is, and I think we get front-runner fatigue. I like Jalen Brunson. Uh, if I had one guy to take, I would take Jalen Brunson. Wow. But Jordan the, Barnett. The season Trey Young has had is unprecedented, and it's been exceptional. Front-runner fatigue, huh? Well, you know, I mean, it's the same thing with the Heisman. Guy, you know, is, is the front-runner to win the award for so long that we start picking them apart. We want to argue for other guys. I thought maybe that's why Seth ended up with Potter tonight because he had front runner fatigue and called yeah. for a changeup. I will say this to Coach Greenberg. I never feel smaller than when I'm sitting next to Chris Cotter in studio. The guy is jacked. <laughs> he's absolutely <laughs> diesel. And when he's eating his Greek yogurts in between half times, I feel uh, it's a little emasculating. Meanwhile, both teams are jacking up shots left and right. We've got a shootout going on here after LaChance hit that last three. And then Porter answered again. Jonte Porter's closing out on what would be his season and career high. Shot clock at five and an offensive mm. foul on an illegal screen. Joe Toy commits, pardon me. Jerry Baptiste commits it. Missouri gets it back. They're shooting 69% this half. Tigers have hit 11 of 16. Porter looking for another assist. It gets blocked inside by Baptiste. 
Dante Porter already has four assists tonight. Corner three, that one goes! Maxwell Evans with his first triple. Bandy looking for some memorial magic to get back in this game. And Porter wow. will quiet him with a smooth stroke. Well, Conzo Martin has plopped Porter right at the foul line against that zone. And he made a nice pass to possession before on the shot that got blocked. And then there, just turns, faces, and fires. Who wants it? And Missouri comes out of there with it as Jordan Barnett finds it. Dante Porter offers a screen. He's got a season high 19. And he's got a new season high 22. All smiles for Jonte Porter. If he keeps this up, he won't be little brother much longer. <laughs> he won't be the other Porter. Evans tries to fit it around the corner, taken away by Missouri. They have been a much different defensive team in this second half. They've held Vanderbilt to 35% shooting since the break. Per year, sizing nice it up. Pass. There's Porter, and his night continues with the slam. He is decimating the 2-3 zone. He's either catching it at the foul line or he's setting that high ball screen and just playing off. He is decimating this Vanderbilt zone. Look at the turn and face there. They are moving him all over the place and then there's the cut down. He's got their last nine points. Chate Porter and Michael Porter, the brother, the other Porter is loving it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile and in part by Mountain Dew. Do the Dew. Well, a lot of bubble teams sweating it now. North Carolina's not a bubble team at all. Should be a good one tonight in Chapel Hill. Number nine, North Carolina coming in on a six-game win streak. They take on Miami at nine Eastern, trying to go into that game with Duke in Durham on a seven-game win streak. That's Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. Heels Canes, also available on the ESPN app. Jonte Porter may have played Missouri off the bubble and solidifying their chance to play in the postseason. Last NCAA tournament for the University of Missouri 2013. You know, when freshmen are struggling, they can go one of two ways. I mean, they go south for good. Or in the case of Porter, he has really responded. And again, in his last three games, only 9 of 26 from the field. Really hasn't had a presence here tonight. He storms back and he should be in high school I mean I think that's one thing we forget at this point of the season Tillman left it short a lot of coaches will say well my freshmen aren't freshmen anymore well is he a freshman now because he's supposed to be a senior in high school Peyton Willis Another board for Barnett. That's where when you need a bucket, if you're Vanderbilt, there's really no other recourse. I mean, they don't have somebody they can throw it to. They don't have creators off the bounce that are going to finish consistently. It's about moving the ball, trying to get open threes, and, and knocking down perimeter shots. They just haven't done it in the second half. And cr credit Missouri's defense. They bring a double on Porter. Robertson finds it. Now to Geist. It's go time for D Bandy. Down 12. 
And they give it up. It was senior night last year where Vandy got a home win against Florida that solidified their spot in the tournament instead of on the bubble. Luke Cornett had a big one that night. Now with the Knicks. Able to play their way in. Lachance commits the foul. It's only the fifth team foul for Vandy, so they want to force Missouri into a shooting situation. They got to hurry. Saturday, 8:15 Eastern, part of part two of college basketball's greatest rivalry, and it's a Sonic blockbuster. Carolina, Duke, top ten showdown. 8:15 Saturday, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Another foul. Peyton Willis picks up this one. Six-team foul, Missouri being the bonus next foul. Well, and this is what they did at the end of the Texas A&M game the other day, is they started fouling at A&M, forcing them to go to the line, and, and A&M didn't make free throws. And, and Vanderbilt almost stole that game, ended up coming back. They were down 24 at one point in the second half to A&M. They ended up losing that game by eight, but made it as close as four a couple of times late thanks to a 23 to 6 run per year trying to fit it into porter turns it over the chance transition three a leaner it was halfway home and then brown fouled on the floor how about cleavon brown in that exchange he gets the deflection on the defensive end then sprints the floor and gathers the offensive rebound. And this is this is just a great play end to end. There he is getting his hand on it. Then he follows the play and just carves his space. Actually, it's the space open for him. What a play! It was only the sixth foul on Mizzou. Vandy will be in the bonus after the next one. 2.11 to go. Oh, my goodness. It still goes. Despite coming up a hair short on the jam, Cleavon Brown with an emphatic move on the baseline out of bounds. Vandy executed this perfectly. Yeah, this this was a beautiful design on an under out of bounds. And uh, you could pop a shoulder out now, catching that on the front of the rim. But what an athletic play at the basket. And we actually didn't see the entire execution. The whole play was really well designed. Cassius Robertson works free and drains a three. He is so good shooting going to his right. In that Kentucky game the other night, you did, Tom, his first three three-point baskets were dribbling to the right into the shot. It's like he's shooting off a pogo stick. It really is. Nice move and a bucket inside. And a foul in the backcourt by Lachance will stop the clock with 1.11 to go. It's one of those things where guys, you know, you want them shooting off the bounce, but there are certain guys, they're going to shoot a high percentage if they get it into their the, the hand that they want. And for Cassius Robertson, it's that right hand. And the elevation off of his shot is remarkable. He always seems to be wearing his shooting shoes. Geist off the mark there. Lachance. At a minute, it's Willis. Roberson fouled by Tillman. The third on Tillman. And Jeff Roberson go to the line. He's an 85% free throw shooter. Fourth best in the SEC. It's one of the things Vanderbilt has actually done well this year is rebound the basketball. And you wouldn't expect it because they are undersized. They are a perimeter shooting team. But they have rebounded the ball well this year. Sports Center at night after Miami, North Carolina on ESPN with Bucci and Levy. They'll tell you how Ty Lue's changes will affect the Cavs tonight against the Nets. 
Plus, they'll take a trip down Tobacco Road for the greatest moments from college basketball's best rivalry and how Derek Jeter plans to build a winner in Miami. Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, the, the first way you build a winner in Miami is don't trade Giancarlo Stanton yeah. to don't, the Yankees. Don't trade everybody. How about that? <laughs> Quick foul on Cassius Robertson. That's Saban Lee's fourth. So that'll put the Canisius transfer at the free throw line. Under recruited coming out of high school in Toronto. And Cassius Robertson has one on one coming his way. What a revelation he's been for Conzo Martin in Missouri. Where would they be without this guy? This is the front end. And then a foul. Wow. Nine point lead for Missouri and following that script that you talked about. A chance for Vandy to try to work their way back at the free throw line. Uh, you know, Conzo Martin is discussing something there. I mean, there's not much to discuss. That's a player missing the front end of a one and one and then committing just the Worst foul you could possibly commit in that spot. One shot. Straight in. One. Oh. oh, it falls off. Robertson. Lee can't foul him. He's got four. Good ball movement by Missouri to work some clock, and they'll get a hand on Geist. It's a second on Peyton Willis. Another one on one for Missouri. Tigers struggled at the free throw line late in losses against LSU and Ole Miss. Take the lead back to double digits. Van Leer will enter for defensive purposes for Missouri. Per year takes a seat. Vandy has made only four threes in the second half after eight in the first half. Riley Lachance. No. Ooh. Wow. Cleavon Brown came flying down the lane. Oh, it's an eight-point game. He's putting on an athletic show right now. Geist draws the foul. He'll go back to the line. Tigers in the double bonus now. Two coming for Geist, who came into this game at 71% from the line. Two of three tonight. Jordan Geist from Fort Wayne, Indiana, started his high school career at Penn High School in South Bend. Transferred to Homestead in Fort Wayne, where he played with Caleb Swanigan. And then to Ranger Junior College in Texas, where Billy Gillespie was his junior college head coach. And he knocks them both down. Missouri back by 10. 31 seconds left. Lachance gets free. Reverses it in. I want to go out quiet on senior night. He's got 17. 29 seconds left. And a foul before it was inbounded. It's a third on Willis. So Jordan Barnett to the free throw line now. Well, that's what Bandy needs to get back in this game. Some missed free throws. Can't trade twos for twos. Oh, 
One of two free throw attempts the last four games for Jordan Barnett before those two. 25 seconds left. Here's Lachance off the screen for three. And he's been that close on multiple shots here in the second half. You know, every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. And he has, Tom, you said it. Last two or three shots he's taken have been in and then have rimmed out. So Jordan Barnett back to the free throw line. Senior from St. Louis. He'll be playing the SEC tournament in his hometown. Plays high school ball at Christian Brothers. And then started his college career at Texas. Riley Lachance on senior night. Exits with 17 points. Roberson will exit. Wow, Peyton Willis. Missouri will run out the clock in a must-win game for the Tigers. They go to 19 wins on the season, above 500 in conference play. 74-66 is the final. Missouri needed that one. Yeah, and their defense is back to where it has been most of this season. Tigers able to shut down Vandy in the second half. Meanwhile, Mizzou shoots 65% in the floor since the intermission. 74-66 our final. Up next, Oklahoma's at Baylor. But first, let's get you to Chris Conner back in the studio.